Hi, in this video, I'm going to be answering an email that I received from a viewer. Now, I have not read this email, so this is going to be really fun, uh, at least for me. And if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Okay, let's look at the email. The person's name is John, and the subject is GPA, graduate programs, schools, etc. Hey, I know you'll be a good person to ask for this. I have been feeling super down in my studies because even with tons of effort, I'm only getting B's in my university math classes. I've had B's since pre-calculus, the entire calculus series, intro to proofs, discrete math, linear algebra, abstract algebra, etc. My school works on a 1000 point system and there are no curves. A B is okay. That means a 3.0 GPA, which somehow became borderline terrible over the last few years. My ultimate goal is to complete a master's in mathematics. My question is, am I doomed to never get into a master's program? Even if I get straight A's from here on out, I've taken so many math courses already that my math major GPA might get bumped to a 3.1 or 3.2 at most. But if I get a single C, it will drop below a 3.0. Graduate program options are also super slim, as I live in New England and most universities are exclusive and picky for no good reason. I really hate B's. It wouldn't be so depressing if an 80 was the same thing as an 89. It wasn't the same thing as an 89. A lot of effort goes on in that 9% range and no one will ever know the difference! Exclamation mark. Yeah, that's a really good question, John. So I have a bunch of stuff um, to say to this. So first, let me say that I totally understand your question. You're at the point where you really can't get like a 3.8 or a 3.9. I mean, you've taken a bunch of classes. You said you've gone through the entire calculus series, intro to proofs, discrete math, linear algebra, abstract algebra. So you've taken tons of classes and you probably only have a few semesters left. So realistically, there's no way to bump your GPA. So first, let me say that I think that you can broaden your goals. So if there is any, and I mean just even a little bit, if you have any desire at all to go for a PhD instead of a master's program, it's going to give you more opportunity. And here's why. For one, you mentioned the New England area. So that means that you want to stay there because your living situation allows it. Maybe you have roommates, Maybe you live with family, you live with your parents. So you have a living situation that allows you to go to school. And so if you want to continue to go to school for your master's program, it makes sense that you would want to continue your current living situation. However, if you decide you do want a PhD, you can apply to other places, not just in the New England area. There are tons of schools all over the country. And honestly, with your GPA, if you really like broaden your search and you apply to a bunch of like okay schools and also a bunch of good schools and a bunch of you know schools that aren't super popular, you're probably going to get in somewhere. Also, by broadening your horizons, um, you have a better chance of getting in because funding is an issue usually, right? So you didn't mention how you're paying for your master's program, but if you go for a PhD, they usually pay your tuition they give you a salary, they pay your health insurance. It's completely free. All you have to do is put in the time and the hard work because it's really hard. Usually also, you'll teach one class or grade some papers. So again, if you have any desire at all to go for a PhD, my advice, and this is just my advice, would be to go for a PhD because it is usually funded, you get health insurance, and usually, they pay for all of your classes. Sometimes you have to pay like a fee, but you get a salary, right? So you can use that salary to pay. Also, if you have like an aversion to roommates, like I did when I went to graduate school, only apply to schools that allow you to live alone. What I mean by that is only apply to graduate programs that pay you enough so that you can support yourself. When I applied to grad schools, I made sure that every single school I applied to paid me enough to where I could have my own apartment and live alone. That was really important to me. So that, that was one of the criteria that I had when I was searching for grad school. So 
I know it doesn't answer your question about the GPA, but by broadening your horizons a little bit, and if you have any desire for that PhD, go for that, right? Because it will help you. It will help you. It'll help your chances of getting in. Now, as far as your current GPA, what can you do to improve that? Well, you can't. So what you can do is maybe you start networking a little bit more. Um, I'm sure you have professors and a B is pretty good. So you should be able to get some good recommendations from your professors. Also, the math subject test is a very important test. I always think of this as the great equalizer. What I mean by that is it doesn't matter where you went to school. If you have a good score on the math subject test, it's going to dramatically help your application. So the math subject test is a GRE test, but it's only for math. It's not just like the math portion of the general GRE. It's specifically for math and it's very challenging. And so if you do well on that test, it looks really, really good. So despite your GPA, if you have a really high score on that test, that looks good. At the same time, you don't want to put that pressure on yourself to where like you feel like your whole life is writing on this math GRE test. You have pretty good grades. So I think if you broaden your horizons and you look outside of the New England area, um, you can. there's more options. If you are positive that you don't want to go for a PhD, if you're 100% positive, there are still programs that you should be able to get into, and they're online programs. I can give you two concrete examples. Now, I've never applied to these programs, but I know people who have applied to these programs, and I'm pretty sure they got in. So one such program, uh, I believe, is at Texas A&M University. I think they have an online master's. I think they do. You should check. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but that's an option and it's accredited. Another one um, is the University of West Florida. They also have an online master's program, so you should be able to get in. I, I mean, I think. I know someone who went there and they did okay and I mean, you should be able to get in. So, And that one's less expensive than the other one. So that's another option you can always do masters and other places online and stay in your area. So I gave you a lot of information. It's a lot to think about. So if you go for a PhD, remember you get funding, you get your tuition paid, um, and you get health insurance. Also, if you broaden your horizons and you apply to a lot of schools, you're probably going to get in somewhere. I mean, there are so many schools, you know, if you just pick some random school and just say Kansas, that's okay. And people aren't rushing to go study there they probably don't get that many applicants. There's probably not like a huge influx of applicants at some of these schools, especially good ones. And you're a good one, right? It's not like you have Fs or Ds, you have Bs. So I think with your grades, I do think you can get in somewhere. Maybe not, you know, MIT or Stanford, but like you should be able to get in somewhere. And if you decide you don't want to go for the PhD and you want to stay in the New England area, because I know that the schools there are picky. There's some really good schools there. Um, you can always go for an online degree somewhere else. And uh, from my limited knowledge, I've done some research. Um, I, I think I think you might be able to find something where it's like maybe like $1,000 a class. I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit more. But as far as my memory serves, you should be able to get something around that range. And so you should be able to you know, get a master's degree at a price that's not completely insane if you decide to go online if you decide to take that route. Remember, if you go for a PhD, it's free. Sometimes if you go for a master's, it's also free, but that's usually uh, usually not the case. Usually you have to pay for a master's because the funding is usually reserved for PhD students. So don't fret, you can do it. Again, you've got two good options. Go for a PhD, apply all over the place, stay where you live, go for an online school. I think either of those is, is totally okay. One of the benefits of taking the route where you just like get an online master's and stay where you are is you can do that while working, right? These online masters, the classes are in the afternoon sometimes. So you can get a job and make some money, you know, start making some real money and then and then do your masters at the same time, if that's what you want to do. So you've got all kinds of options, right, John? I mean, the world is yours, all kinds of opportunity out there. If anyone else has any advice uh, for John, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Hopefully my video made a little bit of sense. It was completely, right, not edited. <laughs> Just telling you what I think. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck.